So we're just getting introduced to Kurt McCall's Shetland Pony. This one's called Later, and the date I have on is January 28th. I wonder if that's right. Soon, Kurt came walking down his driveway, and he was leading the colt on a short halter. It was a silly thing for me to do, knowing how wild those horses have been. But when they got close to the road, I called out, Does the colt have a name? My question struck the little horse like a bolt of lightning. It reared and twisted away from the sharp sound, tossing its curly black mane. But Kurt had a good grip. When he had the colt on its four feet again, he shot me a single word, Zack. Oh, great, I'm at the end of the book. <laughs> Now, at the back, I have a, I didn't put any copyright on it, but here I have a page that says copyright, and it says, Thinking of stealing my stuff, are you? You beady-eyed little rat. Think you're going to, think you're cunning enough to creep into my pantry in the dead of night and snatch my gorgonzola cheese without springing the trap I've set for you? Think you can get away with it? If you're anything like the pack rats hubby and I had, when we were living on Badger Mountain in the Shasta Valley of Northern California, you probably can. That's where Jerry got his hernia, crawling after you under our trailer home. It was dark in there and scary. He told me he saw red eyes. They might have been yours. Anyway, none of my material is copyrighted, so help yourself if you're so inclined. I am not going to bust a gut chasing after the likes of you. It shows you a little bit what I'm like, too tough. And here I also have a dedication on the book. My dedication is to the people in my stories. They're all real, even though most of them are dead. And only one of them so far has gotten mad at me for putting on her on public display. I was one of Jerry's cousins. I have to tell you that story one day. It was a good one. But anyway, if you should happen to come across yourself laid out bare on one of my pages. If you find I've pressed you into a book like a sprig of lavender, it's only because I like you so much that I want to keep you near me and sniff you from time to time. Then I have something about the cover art and I can't find it anywhere. See what I said here. Cover art, Lori did it. She also did the sketches on these final pages. When Jerry and I were living in southeast Iowa in the late 80s, I was writing stories for a friend who was in Holland at the time. Oh yeah, she was on the Mother Divine program. Her name was Carol Clark, and I've lost track of her. This was back in the 80s, and Lori wasn't as busy then as she is now, so she made me a batch of pen sketches to illustrate the stories precious things. And darn, I've lost them somewhere along the line when one of my computers got obsolete and the new programs wouldn't convert the pictures. You know what computers are like. Pfft, pfft, and things are gone. It's enough to make a grown man cry. I did manage to salvage a handful of pictures. My cover picture of one is one of them, and I don't know what it is. The rest are on these final pages. You can see why I've been begging Lori to squeeze a little more time into her daily planner so she can make me another batch of drawings. For a fantasy story I wrote for the grandkids when they were little. Here's a sketch. It's somebody crawling, climbing up a roof, and that's supposed to be Jerry climbing up the roof with some nails board, some boards nailed to the roof to climb up the roof, and on the top of the roof there's a chimney with smoke coming in it and this young man climbing up the roof has got a stick over his shoulder and hanging on the stick are four rings of garlic sausage <laughs> and Jerry used to have to climb up there and hang that stick over the chimney so the sausage would get smoked so we got to the end of that five minutes here actually I have another whole book of fly specks but I'm only going to send you what you've got here Enjoy. Love you guys. Bye for now.